Okay, so in this series of videos, I'm going to be looking at binomial expansion, which is from chapter eight of pure year one. Different things I'll be talking through is Pascal's triangle, what this idea of factorial notation means, actually doing some binomial expansion, and using these expansions to do some other things like estimation. So first of all, when we talk about a binomial, a binomial is something that looks like this. It's got two terms, hence it being a binomial. And it's an expansion because we're going to be expanding brackets of things that look like this. So anything to the power of zero we know is one. Well, if you're expanding something just to the power of one, it's going to remain the same. And you'll notice here I've just put in these ones as well for their coefficients, just to try and help you spot the pattern. You know how to expand double bracket. You would come up with this expression that we've got here. And then to do triple, well, you'd take this expression and you'd multiply it by a plus b to come up with this. And if you kept going, multiplying the previous one by the bracket a plus b, you would come up with this expression for a plus b to the power of four. Now, looking at this triangle of things that we've got here, there are a few different patterns that I want you to be able to spot. And I've asked some questions. Well, what do we notice about the coefficients? When I'm talking about the coefficients here, if I highlight these in green, the coefficients are 1, 1, 1, 1. They always start with a 1. And then I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 3, 6, 1, 4, 1. And these green numbers that I've highlighted here, these are actually Pascal's triangle. I'm going to show you where those numbers come from in just a moment. Then when I'm talking about the powers of A and B, the power of A decreases each time starting at the power. So for example, to the power of 4, A goes power of 4, 3, 2, 1. And actually, there is an a to the power of 0 in that last one, but anything to the power of 0 is 1, so it doesn't really get included. And if I'm talking about the power of b increasing each time and it starts at 0, although you can't see it here, there is actually a b to the power of 0. Then you've got b to the power of 1, b squared, and b cubed until it reaches that last power. So we've got a few different things. The green coefficients are Pascal's triangle, and the power of a decreases and the power of b increases. And they start at the power or they start at zero. So what is Pascal's triangle? Well, Pascal's triangle is this array of numbers that we've got here, or this sort of triangle of numbers rather than an array of numbers. And one of the things I wanted to point out about this is that with Pascal's triangle, each term, each number, except for the ones which you put along the sides, is found as the sum of the two terms above. So for example, this four that we've got here is the sum of the two numbers above, the three and the one. This 10 is the four and the six being added together as well. So if I wanted to find the next number, we always start with a one at the beginning. It would go six, 15, 15, Oh, this is typed in wrong. This should be a five that should be here. This should be, uh, that's not a 15 either. Let me, that's threw me off. So this is going to be a five. We would then have 20, 15, six, and one. So if you've got this printed, you might want to make sure that you change that one there so that it is a five as well. The other thing I wanted to say here is that the second number of each row tells us what row we should use for an expansion. So if we were expanding 2x, uh, 2 plus x to the power of 4. The power is 4, so we use the row that features the 4 here. Now, it's a little bit annoying because you might think, oh, it will be the first, second, third, fourth row. But actually, what we do here is we call this top row the 0 row because this is to the power of 0. Power of 1 squared cubed power of 4 power of 5. I'm just going to compare that with what we've got here. Why don't we just have a look at one of them? Let's have a look at this one that we've got. It goes 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And yeah, you can see in this one that we've got, it goes 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So it does follow Pascal's triangle that we've got. Now, I have put a tip that I would recommend you trying to memorise each of these rows, of these rows down to this fifth one. I definitely know them up to the cubed, and I always have a good guess at the power of 4. If you need to, though, you can very quickly draw out Pascal's triangle to help you. Do make sure you change that from a 1 to a 5. There was a typo there. So we'll later see why each row gives us the coefficients in an expansion of a plus b to the power of n. But for now, this Pascal's triangle is going to give us those coefficients in those expansions. And later, we'll see why that is true. So let's see if we can just apply this into an example. So we're going to find an expansion of 2 plus 3x to the power of 4. Well, this is a bit like 
a plus bx to the power of 4. Just a quick reminder, we said that there would be the coefficients, there would go 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. The power of a would start at the power of 4, 3, 2, 1, and then it wouldn't appear in the last one. And then the power of b would start at 0, and then it would be b, b squared, b cubed, b to the power of 4. And obviously all of these terms here are going to be added together. So we're just going to use that pattern. So what we do is we start off by saying what the coefficients should be. So it's the power of 4, so that fourth row, sorry, that technically fifth row, but it's what we call the fourth row. And the coefficients we know are 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. This time, though, our value of a is 2. So I put a 2 here with an arrow going down to remind us we start off with the power 4. We're just going to keep decreasing that power each time and substituting it into this expression. And we have 2 to the power of 0 at the end, which you don't have to write down. You can just say that it's 1. And then the other one is the b part, the 3 to the power of x. Now, we know that it doesn't really appear in this first part here. That's because 3 to the power of x to the power of 0 is just 1. So you can just write a 1 in that place. Then we're going to increase the power. So I'm going to have 3x. I'm going to have 3x squared. But it is not 3x squared. It is 3x all squared. And that is very, very important. Then my next one should be 3x cubed. And then I've got 3x to the power of 4. So as we go down here, all of these terms are going to be multiplied together. And that is going to produce all of these different bits that we have up here. So let's actually do this question. We're then going to say that 2 plus 3x to the power of 4 is going to be equal to these three terms multiplied. So that's just 1 times 2 to the power of 4 times 1. So it's just going to be a 2 to the power of 4. Then I've got 4 times 2 cubed times 3x. Then I've got 6 times 2 squared times 3x squared. And then I've got 4 times 2 to the power of 1 times 3x cubed. And then I've just got 1, 1, and 3x to the power of 4. So I quite like seeing some of these things here. We've got the coefficients. We've got the coefficient of 1, 4, 6, 4, and the 1, but I haven't really got those 1s in there. We've got the powers of 2, which is going 4, 3, 2, 1, and then it's not in the last one because that's just a power of uh, 0. And then we've got the powers of the 3x. Well, there is power of 0, power of 1, squared, cubed power of 4. Other thing you might notice is that the powers are always going to add up to uh, these powers we're talking about here will always add up to the power of the expansion. So here we've got a 4 and a 0, a 3 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, a, a 1 and a 3 and a 0 and a 4. So I'm going to get rid of some of those highlights so it looks a little bit less confusing. I'm actually just going to work out what each of those terms are using my calculator. So I'm going to do 2 to the power of 4 for that first one, which you probably should know is 16. And then for the next part, I'm going to do 4 times 2 cubed. So that's 4 times 8. But I'm going to just say that like this. And I'm also going to multiply that by the 3. So we then get 96x. Now for this last part, you've got to be really careful when you do the 3x squared that you're going to do a 3 squared rather than just a 3. So that's going to be 6 times 2 squared, which is 4 times 3 squared, which is 9. And so we get 216x squared. And then the last couple of bits we've got here, I've got 4 times 2 times 3 cubed. So that's 4 times 2 times 3 cubed. That's 216 and there's going to be an x cubed there. And then my last part, I've just got a 3 to the power of 4. And you probably know what 3 to the power of 4 is, and it's 81. So I get 81x to the power of 4. So if you were to manually expand 2 plus 3x to the power of 4, you would end up with this. And it's worth noting that this has been written in ascending powers of x. And technically, this first one is a power of x. This first one that we've got here is 16x to the power of 0. So we do call that the first one in the ascending powers of x. OK, so let's try this next one. I'm not going to write out the, um, the whole of Pascal's triangle here, but I'm just going to quickly flash us back to see which of the coefficients are going to be that we're going to use. So it's to the power of 3. We're going to use 1, 3, 3, 1 for the coefficients. So let's put these straight in. 1, 3, 3, 1. 
And then the three, we're going to start with the power of three. This is from here that I'm saying that we're going to do three. So it's going to be three to the power of three, three to the power of two, three to the power of one, three to the power of zero, it's just one. And then the powers are going to be going for the minus two X, they're going to be going upwards. Well, that's to the power of zero. Then we're going to be doing it to the power of one. Then we're going to be doing it to the power of two. And then we're going to be doing it to the power of three. Again, notice how the powers two and one, one and two, zero and three, they always have to add up to the power of the thing that we're trying to expand. Notice how I used brackets. You have to use brackets to make sure that you're doing the negative two being squared. If you just wrote minus two x squared, you're not actually squaring the minus two as well. They both need to be squared. So let's go straight in. We're going to now say that three minus two x all cubed. I'm just going to multiply down all of these bits so that we have all of those coefficients. Um, yeah, all of the, the correct bits we need. So I've got one times three cubed times one. That's just three cubed. I've then got three times three squared times minus two x. I've then got three times three to the power of one times minus two x squared. And then I've got one times one times minus two x all cubed. I don't really think I'm going to need a calculator here. So three cubed is 27. Three times three squared, well, that's three times nine, which is 27. And 27 times two is 54. So it's going to be a 54x. You just need to decide, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, there's only one negative here. So it's going to be a negative 54. And for this next part, I've got three times three, which is nine. I've got negative two and it's being squared. So you should think to yourself, is a negative two squared? Is it going to be a positive or a negative? Well, it's going to be a positive. So first of all, I'm going to put that plus sign in. So that's three times three times two squared. So that's three times three, which is nine. Nine times four is 36. So it's going to be 36 x squared. And then for the last bit, we've got a negative number being cubed. So that's a negative times a negative times a negative. Hopefully you're going to spot that that is a negative there. And so it is going to be negative. Oh, I forgot to do the two cubed, which is eight negative 8x cubed. And you'll notice this quite nice pattern here that it goes positive, then negative, then positive, then negative. So there will be that alternating pattern if you have one of the terms as negative like this. So that is a quick introduction to using Pascal's triangle to do some binomial expansion. And I'm going to do one more video for exercise 8a, and then you can have a go at some questions.